gentlemen, welcome back to the familial hibernaculum, also known as the EOD Mark One, proudly free of death by PowerPoints since, uh, well, since its inception. Am I the only one what sees it's getting worse, not better? How many Jesus meetings do we need for the boss to let us know how fucking great he is? Hey, remember, sycophants, he who finished his firstest with the brownest nose wins. <laughs> we are going to have a go at this little guy here. A long-term review. This is the Milwaukee Hacksaw is all. And we're also going to take away more of your autonomy and personal accountability in the name of safety. Old Uncle Bumblefuck and a little heavy there for a Tuesday night. Well, that's what keeps the rent down low, keeps the riffraff out. It's just me and you now, partner. If you can't laugh at your boss, <laughs> who can you laugh at? But it could be worse. It can always be worse. Nothing like that healing powers of self-introspection and uh, inspecting your belly button for making you want to brush your teeth with the 12 gauge so let's not go there <laughs> that's a heavy shit okay uh, uh, okay let's turn this thing around we'll pull up there once was a dude named Susie who was hung like a pop can hugely when asked what he did to prevent a weak kid I've got my favorite beer koozie. <laughs> uh, a commenter a while ago put that in there. Thank you for sharing a laugh in the shop. I appreciate those, especially the handwritten ones. Oh, it's tough to get a handwritten note on the internet, but somehow managed. Let's see, this has never been a part on account of the purity seal here. So we'll go ahead and cut that, get that a part, have a look under the skirts and give her a tune-up. As you saw in the previous video on this uh, black beauty, we had a little rattle, a little rattle in the dingus end there. Uh, we got to take that apart what for fixing it. Got to get this wee clip out of there. That uh, works good when there's no room for a fastener. Oh yeah, my kingdom is a bloody knife. Every tool in the toolbox out on the workbench and not a knife to be found. Fuck. Ah -ha! He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the maxim foe he sought. So rested by the tum tum tree and stood alone in thought. Ha ha! Ah ha! Ah ha! Ah, this'll do. Ah, oh, full of, full of fucking schmoo. Gross. We're in the remnants, disgusting as they may be, of carbohydrate foam, long dead. Actually, that's more like flour, and <laughs> wood flour and glue. I'll get that out. This is just a light duty rig, but it's, it's served me quite well. Interesting that the board is right there. And then the daughter board here, which shows the, uh, the indicator. Uh, one thing about more expensive tools versus cheaper tools is the cheaper tools never have a battery indicator on. It's nice to have it on the tool. I'll tell you that because you just pull the trigger. Whereas like the Makita, you need to push the button to for in order for it to tell you how uh, how much chooch is left in the chotch. But in this case... You just pull the trigger and you know right off the hop. I mean, the weakest link here, the trek mechanism, and you can see why you would want a bellows on this actuator rod. Because schmoo gets in there is why. And no particular name brand on her. No snap action. You see, it is making and breaking the full battery voltage. And we have the three lines for a uh, analog potentiometer. The wiper. Here's something interesting. There's some sort of wax or blue urethane schmoo. What's going on there? Maybe a calcified old grease from the actuator rod. It's a mystery. Wrapped in an egg. <laughs> exactly. Easy for you to say. So we got an Atmel AT Tiny. 
ubiquitous chip. I bet you they're not at metal anymore. They're probably gone with a uh, lower grade chip that does exactly the same thing. And we can see all the through hole vias for the heat sinking of the MOSFETs. There appears to be two different styles of MOSFETs. So uh, possibly totem pole configuration with a MPN and a PNP. Just the, the reverse of that switch. These are essentially just uh, electronical switches. Not too, too much going on in that board. We see the current shunt. This is uh, so the brain box can measure how much is current is going into the motor and uh, appropriately shut her down when you're giving her too much of a hot supper. All right, close your lungs or filter through a cigarette. A shotgun of some goo. Laid bare here now is the Barber Anifact, rocking and a rolling, wheeling and a squealing. You see it's worn right through the rubbers. Nothing impregnated yet, but not long for uh, for something terrible happens. So it's good that we're in there and we see. I'm not sure that this thing is going to be fixable because it's not actually affixed with fasteners. There's a pin. It goes in the front C face of that uh, small little brushed DC motor and she's wallered right out there. Of course, as witnessed by the fact that this is seven years old, it's had a very light duty life here in the Empire of Dirt. You put this in the hands of a turd herder and there's no way this would last, uh, last seven years. Uh, not disparaging turd herders, of course. We are all, well... Any kind of vocation, technical vocation or uh, profession it is essentially a sub-trade of plumbing because we all got to deal with other people's shit. That's, that's just the way it is. So if you're getting too big for your britches, just remember at heart, you are a plumber. As the older gentleman in the crowd will note with rueful appreciation, you got a bit of a leakage <laughs> <laughs> from the dingus end here. That's, uh, that's what happens when you got to go to the bathroom twice a night. <laughs> Drips on the bathroom floor. No big deal though, Will. Wow, that's pretty fucking... Wow. Wow. Having cleaned up the schmegma now, we should be safe to split the countenance. Have a look at the inwards. See why the hell that's so weeble wobbly. What happens with these is uh, the gear strips out a lot of times. Especially once you start getting some weeble wobble in the mechanism, then the gear doesn't necessarily... Yeah, that's had some hot suppers, man. You see, the more slop there is in the system, the more slop there is at the interface of the gears, the easier it is for it to strip out. So you get a 200-pound gorilla on there, it starts it, stalls it, or... Uh, you know, hits it trying to trying to poke into some drywall and hit a two before or something, and, and that's all she wrote. But of course, I baby all of my tools. Now this is interesting on account of being a fair bit of meat there on the shaft, but yeah, too far, too far, fair bit of meat there on the shaft. But it would have been better off. You know, that helps with uh, not you know flaking around too much, but. They didn't do anybody any favors by not finishing this properly. You listen to the sound of her. Even after I've worn it down, what ends up happening is because this is this is not a great finish, it wears out this bushing, and then you get the old, yeah, loose as a goose effect. So we're gonna go ahead and change the grease in here. Cause that's all hot carbony oxidized grease with uh, metallic flecks of iron in there from the stuff wearing plumb out. Now this rear bearing is in a blind race. Well, not completely blind. We could whack that out and make a little tool with the three pins. What I'm going to do though, just save myself some hassle and test the bearing. So what you want to do, you can't just spin a bearing. You have to put it under load. So you press down nice and firmly and then you just feel for tight spots or schmoo in there. You'll be able to feel any kind of brunelling or any chunks taken out of the races. You'll be able to feel if if the cage is missing in one spot or one of the 
one of the balls has a chunk out of it, you'll be able to feel everything just by putting some pressure on there. And that bearing feels absolutely perfect. Looking now at the motor and the pinion. The pinion still in very good shape. No sharpness. It hasn't worn out on, on the pinion. Same thing on the crown. No chunks taken out of it. No real sharp spots. All nicely worn in. Just getting just getting good and seated there now. Unfortunately for the motor, we we will wobble. There's nothing we can do for it other than add some some uh, prophylactic schmoo in there just to keep it affixed. But it's still going to be rattling around because of course that's a uh, elastometric uh, adhesive. It, it it moves. We'll check the bearing now. Same same effect. Put it under load. And that bearing, perfect. Looks like the connections are all tight. Look at the state of the brushes. Just have an old peek in there. Plenty of brush material left. Looks like a copper impregnated uh, graphite material. And the com bars themselves, they're not all gouged up. Yeah, nothing wrong with that motor. That will give us plenty of, plenty of service life left in that thing. What we can do... Help us out though is yeah, add some silastic or some silicon and at the same time we'll put some silicone on there as well. Properly engineered it and so ethically sourced Wiener Schleiden in there. Listen, don't don't worry too too much about what kind of grease you're you're putting in there. I would put in some molybdenum disulfide goo, but I don't want it all over the wife's white couch there's a moratorium on that and this being back and forth she'll leak out of there and then it just gets every which words so we'll just put on some regular old axle grease or this this stuff ep2 not too thick but good for low temperature as well because it's fairly cold in here i got a rung what a brung which is this uh high temp rtv room temperature vulcanizing silicone now this this cures with moisture and uh, acid, uh, vinegar. That's the smell you get. And, of course, not good around electronics. However, in small doses, not really a big deal. This isn't the stuff what's sensor safe, but it'll still be just fine. Of course, these boards are all conformally coated anyway. So the chances of getting a failure from... In betwixt the between of this thing being applied and it fully chooching. Yeah. Slim to nil. Not something I'm particularly worried about in any case. So there we go. I think we can safe. Oh, make sure the trigger. Yeah, trigger works. And she goes together like store bought, which is the mark of a decent tool maker. That is the mold maker who has put his expertise into making this clamshell. Now before we go and smear red RTV all over the waist credenza we're going to want to test her out. Uh, you must always choose the lesser of two weevils. You'd want this to fully set before you ran her but the thing is if it fully sets and it doesn't you know there's always some guesswork involved when you take things a part. Broke the prime directive, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> so I went in there and fixed it. So now I just got to make sure. Oh, yeah, it works like a hot time. Sounds a lot better, too. There you go. Milwaukee M12 rattle trap. Pretty light duty tool. Horribly finished on that, and we saw what happens as it wallers out the bushing. At the same time, it served me well. So thanks for watching. Tea and sympathy and so forth. Keep your deck in a vice.